All right, hello and welcome to That's The Point. Here we get into the nuts and bolts and sometimes the white papers and data sheets of construction technology. My name is Corey Meyer here with my esteemed colleague, Jonathan Stickle. What's up? Doing well, glad All to right. be here. So today we're gonna kind of talk about something that's kind of taking the industry by storm right now. And that's the idea of GNSS in building construction. Historically, you know, there hasn't been much uptake in satellite-based positioning for vertical construction, but as they say, well, times they are a change in. Yeah, so this video, we're just gonna quickly dive into each one of these and kind of talk about the pros and cons of each solution. One of the biggest questions that immediately comes up as we start talking about using GNSS in building construction is what type of reference station you're using, right? So because for RTK or real-time kinematic GNSS, the kind we use, the super accurate type we use in construction, we need a reference signal. It's not just enough to just go take a receiver out there without any other type of correction because it needs those corrections to get it dialed in. Otherwise, it's only going to be as accurate as, say, your cell phone or something like that. And we need to get much more dialed yes. in than that. Um, so for the sake of conversation here, there's really three ways to get this reference signal on your project. We've got a local base station, which is the most common, most historically like used version. We have a virtual reference station or a network correction. And we have the newest one, which is satellite reference. That's kind of the plan we're going with. And the first method, as we mentioned, is the most traditional, and that's the local base station. So what happens is you set up a local fixed station on your year project, it looks just like this one here. Um, you set it over a known point, and then you broadcast that out. So this is the most highly accurate or high accuracy option. Um, you know, typically we can talk about this. Obviously, it changes depending on where you are in the world, but typically three sixteenths of an inch or better day to day. Um, the other nice thing about this is it is scalable, right? Mm -hmm. Once you set it up, you can broadcast this to as many rovers as you wanted to. Everybody can grab that signal and use it on the project, and you're all effectively working from the same from the same fixed base station, so you're all going to get similar accuracy. Um, and it's also controllable in that you own the whole thing from start to finish. You know the setup. You know how it's going to work. You know your site cal. Yeah. So with this situation, the setup is very important. Is. So you need to ensure that, that your control and your initial setup is dialed in. Otherwise, your project will be consistently off each day. It's, it's not going to be on if your setup's bad. That's right. So the <laughs> next option we're going to dive into is the virtual network. Right. And network connections... Um, corrections are completely replace the local base station. So all that is required is a cell connection and a subscription to one of these networks. So you will commonly hear these networks referred to as VRS or virtual reference stations. Um, but by dialing into this network, your rover is actually receiving similar corrections to what they would get from a traditional base station, but they're getting it from over the internet in real time. Yeah, so the setup is a little easier and quicker, but you have to have a subscription or a login. Yep. You may go through a local DOT or a private party. Um, just check with your local building point partner and we can help you assist with this. Um, but you do give up a little bit of accuracy, but it's still very, very close. You're looking at three eighths of an inch to a half an inch, which is which is common. Yeah, and that's that's really more than enough for a lot of these applications. And again, your building point provider can work. We, we're very familiar with all of the different networks in the local area and stuff like that and options you might have to be able to dial into. Um, so, But it is a network connection. So we have to stress when we're talking about these network corrections, you do need to check into your control regularly to ensure that you understand the error that is present um, and make sure you don't have any weirdness with the network that you might not be seeing on it, you know, just comparing it day over day. Mm -hmm. And the final option we have is the latest option. And as of this video, it's just been announced for the Trimble R780, and that's satellite-based corrections. Trimble calls it Centerpoint RTX, and it's a simple subscription, just like the networks. Um, but the Trimble R780 can actually receive not only the GNSS, um, like it would as a normal GNSS receiver, but it's also receiving the RTX corrections as well, um, giving you a super simple setup and initialization without worrying about a local base or a VRS. Yeah, so the trade-off here is accuracy, and we do give up a little bit of that, but you can still expect sub-inch measurements, right. which is more than acceptable for exterior electrical, water, and other site applications. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're thinking like, you know, your parking light poles, security poles, fencing, um, utility runs, stuff like that, more than okay. And that's why we're really excited about this new Centerpoint RTX that is coming to the R780. Um, with Trimble GNSS, you have the ability to select the technology and the workflow that really honestly makes the, the most sense for you and your, your application. So I know we've covered a lot today, so don't hesitate to reach out to your local Building Point representative. We're happy to help you formulate well, whatever GNS strategy works best for your specific application. Yep, and don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with the latest tips, tricks, and pointers we post here at That's The Point. 
John does a lot of talking, so I need a breather. Yeah, me as well. <laughs> so thanks for lending a hand, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on That's the Point.